Hello, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm here again to discuss briefly one more concept from post-colonial studies called worlding. Uh, worlding as a concept was first introduced by Gayatri Spivak in one of her essays, which was entitled um, The Rani of Simur, an essay in the study of the archives. And I'll post a link to it uh, in the description. And since then it has been expanded and broadened and used, but basically in that is essay, Spivak describes three kinds of colonial representation of native India. And for the purposes of this brief lecture, I'll only dwell on the first one where she describes this scene of a British officer, I think it's Captain Birch, who is traveling across India with his Indian servant. And in the process of doing that, since he's been sent to gain information about that part uh, of India and send it to his superiors in Delhi and then from there to England, in the process of traveling across the land, he is recording it, he is mapping it, he's interviewing people. And for Spivak, those actions of having the freedom to travel freely over India with a servant or riding, you know, across the landscape and having the power to map it, name it, record it, forces the native companion that he has with him to protect his own land from the point of view of his master. So protectation is an act of investment, right? Emotional investment, psychological investment in psychoanalysis where we see the world or experiences, experience it as those above us or those who have authority over us. So while Captain Birch is traveling over India, the native traveling with him sees his own land where he might have been born where he was raised as the land as his master sees it right and starts internalizing the idea that this world upon which they are traveling belongs to his master and that way of looking at their own land by the natives it is what in a nutshell is the wording of the word for the natives now the lineage of the term is from heidegger and to be very honest, I'm not an expert to explain the, those aspects of it, but this aspect of it, it is crucial. So what is at stake when the native world is worded for the natives? I mean, the, basically what it means is that they will start seeing their own land, their own experiences, their own culture from the point of view of their colonial masters. And if they can do that, then how do they mobilize a resistance? So if you look at the Indian educational system under British, you will see that the entire project is a project of wording as well, because in the process of getting their education, the native students are not just learning British history and the British system of government and their system of values, they are also internalizing within that the British view of their own culture, their own traditions, and their own land. And that way, textually speaking, through an interaction with the medium of the text and pedagogy, the natives, for them, the land that they belong to, where they were born and raised, becomes the land belonging to their masters and they see it as their masters see it and if you can word a word to a people then naturally they will also buy into and follow the natural hierarchies that have been established by the masters because there is a psychological investment into the narrative of the master himself hence she uses the term connect so overall, the wording of, of the word, and uh, you can read the essay, of course, it's much more complicated because there are layered kinds of reports that are going back to the metropolitan from India. Anytime 
when a colonial discourse or a colonial document or action encourages or coerces or convinces the native to see his own land, right? From the point of view of the master or sees it as belonging to the master himself or sees its truth as explained by the master, that world has been worded for the natives. And there's a lot at stake in it. Uh, Ngugi Thiango gives a great example of what the educational system in Africa introduced by British, um, especially in Kenya, but other parts of Africa and India does to the natives. When the little kids, they learn the English language, they are not just learning the English language, they are internalizing the logic that this is a superior language that this is the language of power and they can only excel if they master it right at the same time they are also learning a certain kind of disdain for their own language for their own culture right so through the act of schooling then for native students their world has been worded where they see it from the point of view of their masters these are some of the brief notes I have about this uh, complex topic, but I hope these are useful. I highly recommend uh, reading the full essay, the Rani of Simur, and I'll post a link to it. And thank you so much for joining me. And as usual, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And if you want to stay updated about what's uh, posted on this channel, please do subscribe. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.